Hi guys, welcome to our latest video. It's very cold today, but we're going to be showing you how we've installed our underslung LPG tank from Gasset and our fill point. And we wanted to say thank you so much to all our new subscribers. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much to Graham as well. Yeah, go and follow Graham at Sometimes I Wonder. Um, he's been a huge inspiration for our bus build and he shouted us out last week and we just want to say thank you and welcome to everybody. Um, we're going to get on with it now because we're going to just hop in the bus because it's cold. As always, any comments that you've got, any words of encouragement or tips, really welcome. Pop them down below. And if you like what you see, please do consider subscribing. Um, anything from you, Lil? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, big thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. In our previous videos, we showed how we installed the tank structure, um, drilled it to make sure that it all fitted up really nicely, and to check that it was nice and strong. And the next step after this was making sure that it was protected. So what I've done to the gas tank is I've taken the stickers off. So I used a little bit of panel wipe to get rid of the sticky residue off of that and it's what to treat. And I've rubbed it over with one of these um, scotch bright type pads just to keep the surface. Um, and now I'm gonna paint it with chassis paint and then finally over with like a waxy paint. Um, this is just protected from stone chips and to keep its warranty. So it won't be red anymore, it's gonna be black. I use this stuff to um, paint my gas tank up. So exactly the same stuff that I painted my chassis in, it's really hard wearing. And then afterwards, I'm gonna cover it in some underbody wax just to make sure that no stones or debris damage it over the years. After a couple of coats, I left it to dry at the back of the van overnight. In the morning, reinstalled it, and this is how it looked. Today, I'm gonna to install the inlet um, and gubbins for the LPG tank. So what have we got here? So we've got a hole saw to cut a big hole in the van, a bit scary. We've got the flexible hose here, which is gonna to go to this, the filler point, which is gonna go on the, in the skirt down here. I've got a pigtail here that's gonna to go to the regulator. Um, and I've got some electronics here that will power the electrically operated solenoid, which you can see down in here. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be up to today. Um, I'm just going to try and show you a few of the steps that you have to take for this. Obviously the tank is already in um, underneath my grill which has been strategically placed over it. I've been painted up in rubberized paint uh, to keep it from getting chipped by stones um, and that's what I'm going to be up to today. Under the cover you'll find the mounting plate for the sender. This is attached with two small screws. Don't touch the four allen bolt head screws because they release the inner float valve, which you don't want to do. This is the little um, resistive level gauge that goes on the gas tank. Obviously the cable in on it's quite short and I'm putting this under the floor now. So I'm going to extend that just for some tracer wire so I can bring it up above the floor level. So later on I can hook that up hopefully to my P Pico Simmarine, my Simmarine Pico or whatever it is. So I can read the level gauge from within the vehicle. Um, I'm also going to have to extend the solenoid wiring, so I'm going to do that again in a minute and then it saves me having to do it later on. After extending the wiring, I installed it and was relieved to see the level gauge shoot up a little bit because there's a bit of air in there, so at least I know it works. I need to make a little protective box for the gas regulator, so this piece of aluminium um, came off the bus, it was actually underneath the old Ebb Spatcher heater. They kind of like just blammed it on there to cover over a rust hole. So um, I'm going to reuse this, so I'm just going to bash it into shape to make a smaller box to put the regulator in to stop stones sort of flying up and damaging it. This is the little box I made out of that scrap aluminium. The regulator is going to sit inside it like this. Um, so I need to drill some holes through it from the other side to make sure that it's secured. So what I've done, because when you're doing stuff like this, 
if you're anything like me, you often get things wrong, is made a little template. I made a template that matches the back of this with the mountain holes. And then what I need to do is transfer that onto the back here, making sure it's the same way around. Um, and I'll be able to mark up where I need to drill my holes through in this mountain bracket. And that's what I'm going to do next. Just a little tip. Keep your little Amazon um, envelopes because they're great for making little templates like this. Honestly, I probably could have done a better job at sticking this on, but you get the idea. And then that helped me um, get those holes in the correct place. This afternoon, I've managed to finish off installing the solenoid, which is in under here temporarily. And I've run the wiring down through into the front of the gas tank and it's in this conduit. Um, this little piece of hose here will run to the filler point and I'm going to install that next. At the moment it's just attached in the, the front of the gas tank um, and will run along the side of the bus. Um, so it's plenty long enough for that. So first thing I'm going to do is drill a little pilot hole. warning at this point i really should have put a piece of wood on the outside as well where those clamps are um but it didn't cause any damage so i got away with it but a little tip for you there okay. i've just put these clamps on here so when i drill through the whole saw's got something to drill into so these flat these skirts on my bus I've been put over the under what the ones underneath to make it good um, and when I screw through it I, I don't want those to separate so I put that behind there so hopefully I can drill a nice neat hole okay so I'm gonna drill it through <laughs> I'm thinking, right, it shouldn't be this hard. What is going on here? Uh, I'll just crack on, mate, just drill through it. Once again.
if anyone wants to send me a new drill, I would love that. Because mine seems to have set itself on fire. <laughs> I think I'll let that cool down a minute. Please guys, send help. My drill has set itself on fire. Why do these things always happen to me? And that left us with this sort of situation where the inner skin was still in place. Thankfully, father-in-law came to the rescue and dropped around his drill um, and I drilled out the second skin and we were left with a nice neat hole in the vehicle. And this photo shows the double skin of the bus, which I think is what gave the drill its final sort of hoorah. Okay, so um, when you put the little adapter in for the gas fill point, it has two little notches, so I've just popped those in with a file. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is paint all in here tonight with some hammerite, just so it doesn't go rusty, although this is aluminium, but just so it doesn't go rusty. Um, and then tomorrow I can pop the filler in. Don't tell Lily that I use one of her paintbrushes. So I'm just being careful not to get too much on the bodywork. It's okay to get a little bit because there is like a bit of a rim there um that goes around it but this is just a stuff it going rusty really here we have the filler point um i've inserted the four bolts tighten them up onto the plate that goes behind it so then this now goes into the vehicle of the body to bolt through into another um piece that goes onto the back to just secure it in place after a couple of hours under the bus, it was all bolted in place. Okay, ignoring this arch, which I've not done yet. Here is our new filler point. Um, if I just walk you round into the van, all the rust, you can see the tank is in. I've mocked up where the gas will come in to the van. Um, along here, you've got the filler point, which is sealed blow that dust away in a minute um, and then the filler line comes along here and I've secured it with p-clips along here all along here two or three of those uh, couple in under here and then it comes to this filler point around on the side so filler point goes on in there and then the outlet is on the other side so in this conduit here is the wiring for the solenoid and for the sender gauge that comes up to the um through the pigtail sorry into the regulator which i've got protected underneath so that is my gas line setup just need to get that pressure tested and i'll be ready to move on this is the underside of the gas tank so all in here you've got the gauge um the solenoid and the inlet and outlet so i've tightened that all up now um, the kit comes with these little rubber boots to keep moisture and dirt out, out of there. So I've tightened those all up. Under here you can see the uh, filler point inlet that comes around and I've used rubberized clips all the way around to make sure that it's secure and won't move anywhere. Um, coming out this end we've got the wiring that's going to run up to the cab and the pigtail that runs up to the regulator up here. So this is all in now ready to go the final resting position for our gas regulator is going to be under here so i have removed the shield for the time being but i know that that's going to fit once the floor's back in the reason i've taken that off is so the the outlet for our eight mil gas pipe comes out here once the floor's back in i'm going to want to 
have that pipe run neatly up underneath the floor along here and then out to where on top of the floor we're gonna have my gas isolating valve for inside the vehicle so for the time being this is nice and secure on here sorry this is nice and secure on here um ready for the floor to go back in and once it has i can run that gas pipe and then put that shield that we've made back on to keep it nice and uh protected from any stones that might fly up and hit it the wiring that comes out of the gas tank is very simple actually and it comes out of this nice little um, rubber boot here so I've, I've chopped the end of that boot off and then run the cables through some split conduit which I'm gonna zip tie up later on to keep it protected so within here I've extended the wiring for the sender um, that was just two core wire and then I've extended the wiring also for the solenoid and again that was just slightly thicker two core wire to uh, cope with the amperage that is required. And that runs along here into the nice um, wiring harness that we made. And I've just got that sitting here in a little bundle at the moment, ready to um, pass up onto the, into the vehicle once the floor's back in. So yeah, that's, that's our gas installed so far. We've basically got it all ready to go. Filler point is in, gas tank is in, Wiring is in, solenoid is in. In future videos, we'll be able to show you how we uh, bend that copper pipe up so it comes up into the vehicle and we can isolate it off. And all of our services basically are ready to go. We just will need to attach them to some pipe inside the vehicle and run them to where our appliances are going to go. So, a lot of uh, faffing about to get this under slung setup done, but I think it will be worth it in the end. Uh, we're now coming towards the end of the video and we're back inside the bus because it's started snowing a bit, so we've got our feet on so we keep nice and cozy, haven't we? Yeah, and we... there might be enough snow to make snowmans or follow snowballs. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. we'll see. Well, it's, it's cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, cold. Yeah. So that's how we've installed our underslung gas tank. In future vids, we're gonna show you how the gas runs into the, the vehicle and how we're gonna do that. And it'll all be isolated and power stuff like our instant water heater and oven and hob and all of that good stuff. And bathroom. Well, the water will, won't it? Um, next week's video, we're gonna show you our underslung water tank setup which is a little bit different from most. Um, and I've done something that we don't know if it's gonna work or not. And it's very different, so please check back for that. Um, for normal, if you've got any advice for us or any questions, we'd love it if you just, or even if you just wanna say hi, just leave us some comments below, it'd be lovely. And thank you so much again for watching and we will see you next week, hopefully. Bye. Bye. Bye.